Hello, you are watching a topic video. If you're on the YouTube channel, if you're listening to the audio recording, then you are listening to podcast number three. Today we're going to be talking about four topics. The elite breakup and how that might go. Uh, number two, Abron, the... Uh, <laughs> it was a character to put it very lightly, but uh, she debuted on Dark. And the third thing is a, uh, is a potential faction championship, so to speak. And then the fourth is Daly's place and what that could mean to AEW in the future. But we're going to start this off uh, by saying this is a speculation video. I'm sharing my thoughts on these things as I watch AEW. I have ProWrestlingReviews.com, uh, also ProWrestlingReviews.com, the Facebook page, Pro Wrestling Reviews, the Twitter handle. All of those things are for that platform that I am building up. If you're listening to this, you're on the website. If you're watching this, you're on the YouTube channel, so chances are you've seen that name. Now, for the Elite... Page hates the Young Bucks, just can't stand the Young Bucks. I mean, obviously, I'm not saying real life, this is wrestling, we're just going to be talking about what we see on screen. But, uh, you know, he spit in his face at Revolution, and he's been kind of holding back from them on the, the cruise of Jericho. He said, it's kind of funny that we won these belts before you did. And then he was on a promo saying, I kicked both your asses, and stuff like that. So... It's evident that he doesn't want to be in the Elite anymore. It's evident that he feels proud that he showed those other guys that he's, in his mind, better. So I think that's where that is coming from. But to be honest with you, when I sit back and I look at it, okay, this is what's going on now. These are the things he's doing now, you know? Like, he thinks he's better than the Young Bucks. Oh, he proved them that he, uh, by winning the tag titles first, he spit in their face, fuck you guys, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, that's what's happening now. But my question is, where did all of that come from? You know what I mean? It had to have had a start somewhere. Like, uh, it kind of started after All Out when he lost to Jericho, and he tried to kind of start with, uh, withdrawing and stuff. So, I mean, we know the point of his behavior changing, but I don't see how losing to Jericho at Revolution had anything to do with him having animosity to the Young Bucks, who all we, we all know, from what I understand, book the tag division, and he was the one who just won the tag titles, him and uh, Kenny Omega. So, I don't understand. I mean, I understand why he's bitter and angry to a degree. I mean, what with not winning the world title, I, I get where that comes from. That's part of it, but I don't understand where the animosity with him and the elite comes from. That kind of just came out of nowhere. That's one half of this angry type of with loner, live by your own rules type of... I mean, that's the character he's going, right? Half of it is angry from losing a chance at the world title, and the other half is like this problem he has with the elite, but the problem with the elite seems to have come out of nowhere, right? I... I don't know, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I don't understand Hangman Page and the Elite, that whole dynamic. I don't get it. I I know what's going on, but I don't know how it started like to go on. You know what I mean? Uh, that is something that's not uh, within my ability to understand. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the Young Bucks, as far as Young Bucks are uh, concerned in terms of the Elite, I think the Young Bucks are going to turn heel. I think the Young Bucks turning heel would be the biggest heel turn. Oh my God. Probably the... I would say Young Bucks turning heel would be the biggest heel turn since Hulk Hogan turned heel at Bash at the Beach. I think it was 94, or it might have been 95. And... Uh, joined the NWO, who, in my opinion, were the greatest faction of all time. So I, th I think the Young Bucks are going to get resentful uh, uh, that they don't have the titles, and then this Hangman Page, he's going to leave the Elite, and the guy who broke up the Elite is the guy who has the tag titles, and I, I don't know, I think there's just going to be a whole amalgamation of like emotions there around the Young Bucks, so they're eventually going to say, you know what, fuck this, we're not part of the Elite, we're not taking any prisoners, we don't give a shit, we're just going to go after the titles and we don't care about who's holding them or who steps in the way. I think this is setting up like a long-term feud between the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and Hangman Page. Uh, 
there's nothing much more to say on the Young Bucks. That's the reason why I think they're going to turn heel. I think the Elite is going to break up. The Hangman Page is going to leave the Elite. The Young Bucks are going to leave the Elite. Without the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega will just be on his own to keep up with the titles with uh, Hangman Page. And also, the third topic within, the third part of within the topic of the Elite Breakup is this whole Cody Rhodes thing. I don't understand what he's going to do. I don't understand it. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. He says he's never going to challenge for the world title again, and he's not going to accept like offers to go for the world title. Like, And yet he keeps wrestling tag I mean uh, singles matches he keeps winning singles matches he's like oh yeah I beat everybody but I'm not challenging for the world title then what the fuck are you in the division for it's like Jim Ross has said either challenge for the championship or move along people are here to establish themselves and build their resume you know what I mean uh, like he he got that neck tattoo which it, it looks a bit better now than when I first saw it but still like it's kind of off-putting and uh, he's, like, not going for the world title. And it just really, really limits on what he's able to do. I mean, he can go in the tag division. But to me, if Dustin Rose should be in the singles division and Cody should be in the tag division. Right now, it should be Cody and QT Marshall, not Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall. It doesn't make any fucking sense to me because Cody can't go for the world title. Why the hell is he in the singles division when he can't win the title and his brother, who everybody thinks deserves world title, is stuck in the tag division? It's completely reversed to what it should be. So I don't know. Cody's completely screwing up his own career, in my opinion. He's... He's the booker for the singles division. He's fucking around with his brother, too. Like, I don't fucking get what's going on. It's just completely stupid. Um, so, I think the Elite has a lot of internal problems, like Cody and then Paige and then Young Bucks turning heel. Kenny Omega seems to be pretty on par. I don't really see anything positive or negative really coming from him in terms of the tensions between the Elite. He, he, he tries to calm the fight between Paige and the Young Bucks, but... I don't see him, like, after that point, adding positive efforts to it, right? He's just putting neutral efforts into it to get people to calm down. Yeah. Um, so that's where that is. The second thing I want to talk about is Abaddon. She debuted on Dark uh, March 4th. Um, that's either when it... The, the match happened or the date that it actually uh, was shown on YouTube for the episode. But she is fucking awesome. Oh my god. She is so awesome. She, she had that like mist and then she was crawling out and then she came back up and spit the blood and it went over her like face into her eye and stuff like that. It was so awesome. And she came down to the ring and like throughout the matches like it was so cool she like kind of rolled over and she was lying on a thing and she looked up and then uh, she went back on her hands and knees like that kind of reminded me of uh, of the exorcist man man oh man I don't remember her doing a whole lot of offense in the match I think that she was trying to put the character forward and maybe show a little bit more of her defensive side uh, off the top of my head I can't think of any like big moves or notable moves that she did she she might have done one or two but i think it was mostly defense so athletically i th i don't know if it's her body type or not but she could be a bit more toned and offensively she needs to show a lot more but character wise <laughs> that is so awesome man oh man i'd like to see jim Cornette reviewing abaddon he probably won't but if he says this is stupid this is not real life they're fucking around all this campy shit I think that Dustin Rhodes had a really important uh, thing to say at some point recently. He said he believes characters is very important in wrestling, and it is. The Undertaker is one of the greatest characters of all time. I mean, Goldust, in my opinion, was one of the greatest characters of all time. And then you have Kane, and then you have Mankind. You had, uh, I don't really consider Vader a character so much as a burly dude who would fight you, but... There's other examples out there, for sure there is, and characters have always been in wrestling. It, they've, there's, it's something that's always been there, and it's something that has evolved, and it's something that's very important. And I haven't seen a character to come forward with as much intensity and, and involvement and self withdrawal into the character in a long time. Not, I mean, like maybe Finn Balor with the demon, probably. 
but this girl seems to go a, a step further and it doesn't seem like she's trying to present a character forward like Finn Balor's. She's, it's almost as if she's trying to convince people that she that it's not a character. Like, that's her, right? So it was really, really cool. Um, I hope that she goes far. <laughs> uh, I hope that she tones up a bit. I hope that uh, she shows more offense. You know what I mean? Good offense. Not just not just punches and kicks and like dives and shit, but real offense. That would be really cool to see her rise a bit and bring more attention to that. Uh, by her making those improvements, she could definitely be a dynamite appearance at all. She's almost at that point now with her character alone, let alone adding those abilities. She would be a definite dynamite wrestler. So that's what's going on with her. I like her. I just, I just want to fit her in there to uh, to bring some attention to her. Next thing we're going to be talking about is a faction championship. Now, I, I think... I started thinking about this, and I was talking about Buddy Jage. Uh, he's the co-creator of Pro Wrestling Reviews. Uh, I, I think they're coming out with a faction championship, and it was brought up by him. And I agree with him. Uh, because right now they're talking about the free bird rule in AEW, where when you win the titles, like Hangman Page and uh, Kenny Omega won the tag titles, so they're the ones credited with the win. But... Anybody in that faction can defend the tag titles. It's, it's something called the free bird rule. Now, personally, I only agree with that if one of the two original people who won the tag titles is is wrestling, and it's only when somebody's injured and storyline wise are real, but in a way where they just can't be on that show. So if somebody else ste uh, steps in their place. I feel like that's the only. Uh, that's the only way that it could make sense. Actually, that's what my buddy Jage had said. And uh, that's what he said, and I agree with that. Only if somebody's injured through kayfabe or through real, but either way, if they're not there, one of the two original people who won the belts has to be in it. And then the other person, who's not the original guy who won the title, the guy who's just filling in, he should only be able to fill in as if them not the original member not being there makes sense and they can't be there. That That's definitely... What the free bird rule should be. But anyway, getting to the faction championship, that free bird rule is what made me think they're starting to think about a faction championship. Because they might be saying, listen, we don't want to make like a free bird rule because then it'll feel like it's just basically six man tag championship. And at that point, we might as well just have six man tag belts, which I hope they don't do. I hope they don't do that. I fucking. We have enough tag as it is, we don't need another tag division. For crying out loud. <laughs> Fuck, I don't want another tag division. But uh, a faction championship is something that could be uh, fought for. Like Blood and Guts is a classic example of that being on the line between the elite and uh, the inner circle. And it would be like a faction championship. And uh, something like that, I don't really know who would walk around wearing the belt. I mean, if it was the inner circle, obviously it would be Jericho. If it was... If it was the elite, who knows? I mean, I think it would just be like, uh, maybe whoever scored the pinfall to win the match to give their team that faction championship. I think they would be credited with holding it, or maybe the faction would be credited with holding it. Um, you know, something like that. I think would give a lot of meaning meaning to the different factions because we got so many factions in AEW, but nothing to fight for. You know what I mean? There's two belts. There's not enough for them to go after. There's not enough for them to try to capture in that. So a faction championship would give legitimacy to having that many. But at the same time, I step back and I look at like the WWE's twenty four seven championship. Anybody can win it all the time. Like I, I, I just. I look at it and I'm like, I don't see how this faction championship would be much different than the 24-7 championship in terms of it being fucking worthless. It's so easy to win it. Like, you got the elite who's five members and they win it and then all five guys get added to their resume. AEW faction championship 2020 or something. Like, I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, I do see how it could work because, like... It would give uh, it would give something for these factions to fight towards and build storylines around and uh, increase their involvement and, and increase their relevancy to being like here in AEW. But I I just I don't know. 
But the part I don't know is who would be credited with winning it. Would everybody in that faction be credited with winning that championship? And at that point, when you've got factions of five and factions of four, even factions of three winning it, it's like one faction of five wins it. Five different guys get credited with winning that. I mean, is that better? any better than the 24-7 title? Something that WWE fans don't really consider prestigious at all. It's just something for jokes. So I don't know. I mean, I think there needs to be a faction thing here, but I think it needs to be an annual tournament. And that way, when you win a tournament, it could be like the 2020 Faction Championship or 2020 Blood and Guts uh, champion or whatever you want to... I, I don't... See, the thing is, I don't like weird names on championships or, or titles. The 2020 Blood and Guts Championship team, that's... I don't like that. It sounds fucking stupid. I wish it would just say the 2020 Elite Wrestling Faction Award. That's fine. To me, that's straight to the point. And things that AEW wants to be sports-centric, so they should make their titles like sound like proper terms, you know? But anyway, uh, that's the faction championship. Uh, personally, I think it should be an annual tournament. It shouldn't be a constant belt. Um, because if they came up with a faction championship, I'd still want a, a, a men's singles title. I don't care if they come up with a faction championship that's held all year round. Each of the members get accredited with winning it, if that's how they're going to do it. Or if they're going to do it as a once-a-year annual tournament, which is what I prefer. Either one of those ways, I don't care. I still want a cruiserweight title or call it a middleweight title or call it a light heavyweight title. You know what I mean? Like, Or call it the television championship. Perhaps call it the dynamite championship because TV championship or television championship sounds so... That's like too generic. That sounds crap. You know, you gotta have a little bit of spark in your name. But anyway, even that, like one of, like a, a second singles men's title is what's needed. I don't care about a faction championship, whether it's a championship, like we said, or a tournament. I don't give a shit. That's still not enough for me. I don't care. You know, too many people can win that. It's not enough for me to give a shit about. It needs to be a men's singles title. So that's the faction championship. And the fourth thing we're going to be talking about is Daly's Place as a potential AEW headquarters and uh, training area. Now, when you think about it, AEW owns Daly's Place. It's a venue that arguably holds over 6,000 people for pro wrestling. And it has a beautiful skyline. And it's in the same city as the Jacksonville Jaguars where they have their arena and they have their training regiments and they have their... Um, crews and, and, and equipment and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, if I was Tony Khan, I would say, you know what? I'm going to take Daly's place. I'm going to build, like, the guy's a billionaire, all right? Like, he's a billionaire. And I don't, if he's going to make AEW and he's going to make them successful and he decided to go all in, like, they already have dietitians hired. They already have massage therapists hired. They already have doctors hired. Like, they have medical staff and uh, like physicians and like trainers and dietitians, they have these people employed already. Now, whether they're ex exclusively employed to AEW or they're a partner with them, either way, the point is these people are here and AEW is actively paying them. So, if that's the case, I don't see why Tony Khan said I'm gonna I'm gonna build three floors or build two floors, uh, a wing expansion or a separate building, like. Pretty much at the grounds, probably attached would be better, but like at Daly's place, and that's where all the wrestlers can stay. That's where all the the training staff could stay. That's where all the the support staff could stay. People who set up, set down, you know what I mean? That's sleeping quarters, right? That's where people could stay. And then the bottom floor would be like a training area, like a, a gym and a training gym and stuff like that. And that's where people would train for their matches, and that's where they would stay, and that's where they would like practice all the different moves and stuff like that and i mean if you're there and you could set up a ring have a ring set up and then just record like an hour show with dark matches on it and then uh i mean now to the public every saturday there's an event here tickets are like 10 bucks each and you can come and see it and even if you don't get a whole lot of people there it doesn't matter it's just a show that the guys who train all week put on like they train all week and then once a week they put on a show and you can air it as dark matches right um 
You could take those matches and combine it with the dark matches before and after Dynamite and present a two-hour show that would have, like, uh, the Road 2 and uh, promos and the Control Center and the rankings, you know what I mean? Take those things and add it in. Take the dark matches before and after Dynamite, add it in. Take the once-a-week uh once a week matches like whether it's an hour or so long that you would have from the dailies place and edit it and and put it as a two hour show you know what i mean that you could make available on youtube or even on uh, on the the network right i think something like that would be would be really good like personally i wouldn't care i would actually find it interesting some of them would be dark matches some of them would be the dailies place matches you'd get the promos you'd get the the road to so you, you'd get the control center and the rankings you know what i mean stuff like that i would love a show like that that a little bit of everything a little bit of a mishmash but they would have this the, the control room with tony shivani and jen decker they would have to be like throughout the whole thing between the matches and stuff uh and between the different segments and that they would be there to give some kind of uh consistency to the show but i that's the idea they could do for a second show but as far as Daily Place is concerned, they could build that. They can make a building there attached to Daily Place or not attached. And then that's where they can sleep. That's where they can train. That's where they can eat all free of charge. Because you have coaches, you have trainers, you have promo coaches, you have dietitians. Like you, like a lot of other stuff I'm not mentioning right now, all at your fingertips in one place where you could stay at. You know what I mean? That would be huge. I mean, these wrestlers who are not that great could go there and they could train every day and they can learn every day and they can in, in, improve their skills and stuff like that. I mean, basically, you could make it like a wrestling college, essentially. And then once a week, you got a Daily Space venue there to set up, throw up, uh, like have like an hour show of matches and stuff like that and have people who come in and pay 10 bucks and see the stuff. And it doesn't matter if you get a whole lot or a whole lot or not anyway because it's just like a B-level show. That's what I think they should do to Daly's Place. Uh, and the thing is, they're in the same city as Jacksonville Jaguars. Those guys have coaches. Those guys have training equipment. Those guys have regiments. And I bet you there's a number of players on the Jaguars who live in Jacksonville. So that would also be really good because if you have any of those football players who are interested in getting involved in pro wrestling, right in the same city as the team, they can go and they can train or they can go and they can train wrestlers through certain aspects and certain positives from football reality that could help in in wrestling, right? So, so the two can feed off each other and that would be a great relationship. Like, I really don't see how why Tony Khan wouldn't do that at all. Like, t to me, it would be really great if he did that. It would make the most sense. Um, but those are my thoughts on the Elite Breakup uh, in a nutshell now, to go back over what we were talking about. Hangman Page, I don't really get the dynamic with him. He started becoming self-withdrawn, lived by his own rules, and didn't care much about what other people thought. Kind of like kind of soured that started from all out so that's half the reason why he's the way he is now the other half is that he hates the young bucks but i don't want but i don't know where that came from because they booked him and kenny to mitt win the belts so you know i don't understand where uh, pages hatred towards the young bucks comes into play i think the young bucks is going to turn heel due to not getting the belts and the elite breaking up and they might be blamed for us somehow so i think the young bucks are going to turn heel and i think the elite's going to break up because of them leaving which is going to shock everybody because we all think that Paige is going to leave first. I think it's going to be the Young Bucks. I think Cody's completely screwing over his career. He can't go for the heavyweight title. He got that tattoo, which... Why couldn't you get it on your shoulder or something, man? I mean, it's not as bad looking on the neck as I originally thought, but still. And he can't go for the world title, and yet he's in a singles division. His brother, who everyone wants to win the title, is in the tag division. It should be Cody Rhodes and QT Marshall in the tag division. Uh, and... <coughs> And Dustin in the singles division, but whatever. And then we talked about Abaddon. She's basically a zombie witch. Great character. AEW needs more characters. Wrestling in general needs more characters. And, uh, yeah. I, 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 that's, she's really cool. She needs to get a little bit more athletic. I don't know if it's her body tape or if she just needs to tone up. Uh, and she needs to show more offense or develop more offense. But character-wise, that alone gives her a huge chance and uh, possibility for the future. Faction championship uh, kind of ties in with the free bird rule. When you win it, anybody in the faction could defend it. So basically everybody in the faction gets credit for winning that, which to me is no better than the 24-7 title, which is a worthless title. 
Either they're going to do that or they're going to have an annual tournament, which I prefer better because it's not a constant championship that is always there that, you know what I mean, that like all kinds of people get credited for winning when there's only one person who made the pin, right? Um, I don't like the idea of a faction belt. I like the idea of a faction tournament. What's that going to be? I don't know. Hopefully tournament, we'll find out. Something's coming eventually. And then the last thing we talked about is Daly's Place, uh, AEW owning that, them building a two-floor or three-floor wing onto the building where it would be sleeping quarters and training quarters and medical facilities and everything else. So the wrestlers, if they really wanted to, they could stay in those quarters and they could take advantage of all the medical teams and take advantage of the training coaches and take advantage of the promos and the equipment and uh, possibly like do matches once a week, like on the weekend or whenever, and have those matches televised uh, as part of the second show, right? Uh, and uh, people from the community coming in, paying 10 or 20 bucks to come in and see these matches and stuff like that. Uh, and then the Jacksonville Jaguars being in the same community and them being able to train with the AEW uh, crew and they would help each other, so to speak. So that's basically what I want to talk about today. And it'll be really interesting to see where it goes from there. Thanks for staying by.